For more on the MRRT Revenue Shadow Minister for Financial Services and Superannuation, Matthias Cormann, joins us live from Perth. Senator Cormann, thanks so much for joining us today. We do appreciate it. Now, this tax has been labelled a failure by many in your party, but there are four quarters in a year. The iron ore price has rebounded now, trading above that 150 US dollar mark. Isn't it too early to label the tax as a failure? Uh, no, it isn't. It is a complete failure. And of course, uh, the Treasurer was finally shamed uh, into uh, releasing uh, those figures, uh, those uh, updates on revenue collection so far uh, earlier today. And we now know uh, that the mining tax has raised uh, about 90 per cent less uh, than the government predicted at budget time. No wonder uh, that Wayne Swan was scrambling uh, to cover up uh, that information for as long as possible. But the Treasurer says that this would have meant releasing commercially sensitive information if it had have divulged these figures after the first quarter. That sounds like a fair assessment. Well, that was a completely farcical excuse right from the start. I mean, the proposition the government wanted us to accept is that they can come up with a complex new tax uh, targeting an important industry for Australia, make predictions in budget after budget on how much that new tax is going to rise, spend all of the money they think it will rise and more, and then after it has been in place for a while, not tell anyone uh, whether or not it has or whether it hasn't uh, raised what they predicted. I mean, it's just a ridiculous, farcical and unacceptable proposition. But, but, doesn't of course, uh, but doesn't it make sense that the amount of tax in that first quarter raised was so small that people could have worked out what company paid which tax, in which case it, it is commercially sensitive information those companies wouldn't want released, so it makes sense to wait until after the second quarter. No, no, that's actually not right. And uh, I mean, look, I mean, the only reason why Wayne Swan has finally, uh, you know, come clean and released that information is because there was nowhere left for him to hide. Uh, the Senate earlier this week passed an order uh, forcing the tax commissioner to provide that information uh, to the Senate Economics References Committee. Uh, and of course, the tax commissioner would have uh, told uh, Wayne Swan uh, that he would be required to provide that information. So really, uh, Wayne Swan had no other choice. Now, as far as as far as uh, the information uh, in terms of individual taxpayers is concerned. There was no way that providing uh, information in aggregate about how much the mining tax had or had not raised would have told us about who had raised that particular tax. What the government was concerned about and what they're still concerned about uh, is that the very low revenue figures show that the three biggest miners, uh, those who helped design the mining tax in the first place have not paid any of that tax. But of course, confidentiality provisions in the Tax Act uh, are there to protect taxpayers and not non-taxpayers. Uh, so that whole proposition was ridiculous right from the start. OK, the Treasurer says that nobody could have seen this fall in commodity prices coming. And in that case, can you really blame the government no. for this small amount of, of tax raised? Well, look no further than what we said in July 2010 uh, when uh, the government first signed the deal and we predicted exactly that. The point we made then was that the mining tax was a fiscal train wreck in the making. Uh, we said that the Treasurer was overestimating uh, the revenue it would collect. We asked him uh, to release uh, the commodity price and production volume assumptions he had used so they could be scrutinised. He refused uh, because, of course, clearly he had something uh, to hide then. He overestimated the revenue. He underestimated the cost of the various concessions uh, he and Julia Gillard had made in the mining tax deal and of course uh, the consequences that, we, that are there for all to see today were entirely inevitable. Yes, but your party along with uh, some of the miners were suggesting that this tax was going to scare investment offshore. They wouldn't want to invest here in Australia because of this tax. Now if it was never going to raise any money, why would that be the case? Well, and it has, because this is a complex new tax which increases red tape. It is a tax which is uh, more distorting, uh, less efficient, more costly to administer, most, more costly to comply with. Uh, it, it created additional and unnecessary uncertainty and instability uh, in, our, in our regulatory and taxation arrangements. Of course, this sort of decision making uh, by a, a government like the Gillard government scares investment away and for no upside on the revenue side. Uh, so it was entirely reckless uh, for the Gillard government uh, to proceed with, with this complex uh, and inefficient tax. So should the, the government, should the opposition rather, the Liberal Party or well, the coalition be elected into government this year, what would be your plan on the taxation front for the mining sector? 
Well, we've been very explicit. Uh, we, uh, in government, would scrap the mining tax. I mean, it is a dog's breakfast of a, of a tax. It is not good for Australia. It is not good for our economy, and it is not good uh, for uh, it is not good for the budget. Uh, so what we've said is that we believe that the current or the previous taxation arrangements, where you've got company tax on profits, and if profits are high, companies pay higher uh, taxes, and where you've got royalties on productions, where mining companies have to pay a price for the value of the resource. That was an appropriate arrangement to ensure uh, that the Australian community gets an appropriate return from the extraction of a non-renewable resource. But Senator Cormann, so is that an appropriate return when we still see these big miners rolling out billions and billions of dollars in profits? The inputs are owned by the Australian people. Should they not be paying more for them? Well, I mean, the thing is, it is easy to sort of say billions and billions of dollars in profit, but ultimately, uh, absolute dollar figures don't tell you anything about uh, what that constitute in terms of return on investment. I mean, these are very capital-intensive, high-risk projects. Unless, unless you've got an appropriate return on investment, unless you can actually demonstrate that a project will have an appropriate return on capital, you will not be able uh, to attract the necessary investment to get the projects off the ground in the first place. And of course, Cause a stable regulatory environment. Predictability in government decision making uh, is critically important uh, for us to attract that necessary investment so we can continue uh, to grow our economy more strongly. Okay, Senator Cormann, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, very happy to be here. Coming up